Hi everyone, we're just waiting for Alan to come. Um, Hi, Alan. How are you? Ah, there we go. Hi, Alan. You're fresh out of the uh, last session. <laughs> yeah, first one, one to the other one, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, again, we're, we're pretty short on time here, but um, it was uh, really easy to understand. I saw part of the session, so really easy to understand. And we could probably take off from there. Uh, let me see how many people have uh, joined us now. So I, I think as people join, I will just start, start the proceedings. And uh, this is an uh, informal context. It's going to be talking about APIs in the time of COVID. And um, well, if I may just introduce Alan as the uh, digital transformation API strategist, uh, business strategist for IBM, with a, a long tenure in IBM, with numerous positions technical and product and sales. And as I understand it, your current role, Alan, is assisting clients with their IT strategy for digital transformation in the API economy. Right. Yep. Yep. So that means kind of a lot of practical stuff, meeting customers and also blogging. So I, I heard that you, you did a recent blog, which looks really relevant. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, everybody's thinking about COVID nineteen nowadays. It's on, you know, you can't avoid it, right? So, um, so how, how, you know, how can we use what we do in our lives to assist? You know, I'm not a doctor. I can't, I, I can't help patients. I can't. I'm not a person who's going to research and and create a cure. But what can I do in the API space that can help businesses be able to um, support customers better and do things like that? So that that was kind of what drove me to write that blog series. That's great. So um, what would you say with the, uh, I saw the last slide, right, the key takeaways, but before doing that, how would you, I mean, just off the top of, off the bat is, um, I know we've had some questions come in uh, before the session and really the, the prelude here is to encourage live interaction, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I will read out the questions. Um, so unfortunately there's no video. I don't think there's any voice uh, through this, through, through participants. Um, so we just uh, off the bat get some questions going. Um, I mean, the, the obvious question is digital transformation is huge. API is really specific. Um, so how how do you, or speaking for IBM, either one, see the API? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's your up to you to say whether it's uh, yeah. which one it is. But uh, how do you see APIs really helping with customer business interactions? You know, for example, for those of us who are stuck at home. Or for those who are more frontline customer service, um, the repair business, or the the, the 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 people who do have to go to the front line. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the it, it, I, I went through a whole series of different um, thinking when I wrote that that article, the set of articles, um, and and one of them dealt with service businesses, which is very tough because you know a, a service business is typically you are in, in person with another another human being right which is exactly what we don't want to have happen and and, um, and, and so it, it might be uh, you know a, a auto repair that you need to get your car serviced or or somebody's coming to your house to do something uh, on the house and um, and these are the kind of scenarios that that you really you know People are feeling uncomfortable that I, I don't want to. Um, I want to spend as little time, or, or you know, keep my my physical distance from these other folks. So, you know, what we try to then think about is how can we um, make that interaction happen, if if possible. Um, you know, obviously, the the best thing would be can we do it remotely? Is there some kind of a thing that we could do remotely? But assuming um, a service business where I actually have to bring my car in for service. Where somebody's going to come to my house, that's that's not going to happen. Um, how can I uh, interact with that person in a way that still lets me be physically safe? And, and so um, it, it could be as simple as um, using APIs with a mobile app to uh, identify that you know you're here 
um, do any kind of a handoff with like the keys to the car to take it in um, by, you know, saying, okay, the car is, is, is outside. I've left the keys inside the, the car. You can come out and bring it in now and, and basically allow this remote interaction through another mechanism than walking up and directly handing you something where I'm right next to you. Um, um, so, so we can use APIs um, or events uh, is another mechanism to identify when things have happened and the next stage is, is ready to be done um, to, again, even within the repair shop, there may be somebody that's doing the, the intake of the vehicle and the, the what's wrong kind of information and then the repair person and then it may go for uh, a final check kind of a person and then finally out back to you uh, to pay the bill, which may be another person. And, and so all of that um, can be handled through events and through APIs as a mechanism to identify the different transitions and the different states on some kind of an interface that rather than what we've done in the past, which is walking up and, and you know saying hello and being very friendly and <laughs> and all we I'm, I'm afraid we're going to lose our our interactions with humans through all of this, but uh, but you know at least for a time this is where we are. Okay, thanks. So I mean, what what you're describing is like the new customer journey, right? To put it yeah. in uh, comment, uh, current context. Um, from from your sort of the vastness of IBM and the customer base, uh, what have you seen? I always love these stories about what have businesses done to pivot and transform themselves, and how has IBM been part of that? Yeah, well, so you know, let me talk specifically about what IBM is doing for a second. I'll I'll pat ourselves on the back a little bit. Um, uh, you know, we wanted to help as much as we can. Again, we're not going to cure the disease, right? But but what, what can we do? So you asked about working at home. One of the things we've done is we've given um, a, a, one of our, our, our data transfer product, uh, it's called Aspera, it's part of our integration uh, suite of products. Um, we, we've uh, letting people use it for I think 90 days, it might be longer um, because people have to work from home. And, and so how do I move data around to the people that need it? And, and part of what we did with that was work with, I think it was MIT, um, to allow for the researchers who are also working at home on COVID-19 research um, to be able to get to the data that they need. And so this is massive amounts of data that needs to be moved to where the researchers needed to be in order for them to do the work on it. And so this is one of the things that IBM has done. Um, we, we also, I don't know if many people may not know this, but IBM owns the weather.com, uh, the weather company. And, and so um, you know, people go to the weather.com to find out what the weather is. There's actually a link on there uh, on the top for COVID-19 and, and you can get um, COVID-19 data uh, on the weather site for your location. So you can find out what the statistics are and things like that. And, and you know, part of the, the most important things that, that businesses need to do uh, up front um, is uh, information sharing, right? So what is the statistics? What are, what is going on where I am? Is, you know, is it moving in the right direction? Is this something that, you know, is getting better? Is it getting worse? You know, how, how is it going? And so any kind of time that we can share information, uh, the, the, that's good. Uh, we also have the Watson assistant where you can go in in natural language and ask questions of Watson about COVID-19 and it'll give you the latest information. So, um, so there's a lot of things that IBM is doing, um, but of course, other businesses as well. And, and so you start to think, you know, you, you look at um, one of the first examples I talk about is the shopping experience. You know, we all still need to get food. We still need to, you know, to, to do things in our lives. Uh, and, and so, you know, businesses reacted very quickly to um, new modes of shopping where, you know, people are getting things. You know, I mean, obviously, shopping on your mobile app and getting things delivered is not a new concept. But, but the whole idea of, of um, you know, groceries maybe something that a lot of people weren't doing before. And, and um, you know, the other thing that I, I spoke about in that particular article was replenishment of the groceries. I, I don't know if you're in Jonathan. Are you in Singapore or are you uh, where are you located? Sing Singapore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so right, so we I mean. We had our rush on toilet paper as well. Yeah. 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 So with the whole toilet paper thing, you know, or I mean, there are still products that I go to the store and they're not in, in, in stock. And, and, and you know, it, you have to deal with as a manufacturer, um, 
this sudden change in, in, you know, what things are needed to be delivered. And historically, supply chain has been a very batch oriented, you know, end of the week, end of the month, you know, we, we replenish the supply. And that's, that's in these kinds of circumstances, just not fast enough, right? And, and, and so you can start to think about how can I, I, I mean, I, I can't change the bulk thing that I got to send a lot of stuff at once, but when I'm out of a particular item, can I put in a unique order for that? And how would I recognize when that's happened? And so again, APIs as a mechanism to identify that we need toilet paper in Singapore, you know, or, or you know, even a, a, a section um, that, that, you know, I mean, I, I can't remember some of the other products that, I mean, we, we've run out of a, a number of things that, and sometimes the issue isn't even um, that the manufacturer isn't, is, is not, ha it, it has the, is not where the problem is. The manufacturer may have the product, but the distribution centers can't move it because they may have some kind of an outage, right? So, so how do I reroute around that? And, and so all of these things are part of an integration set of scenarios. You might even throw a blockchain kind of a scenario into that, you know, with APIs to put things on for the blockchain and deal with it from a supply chain perspective. Okay, so there's business examples there. I, I'm itching to ask some questions around specifics of APIs and the, the exact way to do it. Uh, but, you know, this is a limited time and we've got some people who would like to ask some questions. Yeah, yeah. So yeah what, what, I, what, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom them in. Well, I shouldn't say zoom them in. I should say um, hop, hop them in, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so okay. If, if I just take them in, I think the order they came in. So apologies if, if it's the wrong way around. So we've got Miguel here, and I'll just bring Miguel in. Okay, let's see. Hey, Miguel, are you there? Okay. There may be a delay to this. I'll just bring the others in as well. All right. <laughs> yeah, bring them everybody. We'll have a big yeah, conversation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's hope they are in. Right. Yes. So do speak up, uh, gentlemen, I think. If you're there, you can speak up. I otherwise, so. otherwise, I will continue asking questions. I think everyone might be a little bit uh, shy. Yeah, it may, it may be uh, a hop-in issue. I, I, I know uh, if you're not using the right browser, it gets picky. So really, okay. Um, yeah. So wh why not on that on that point? Uh, I I mean the 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 the, the stack or the offering that IBM has is really deep. How, how would you describe the benefits of API, and how, how could you give an example of? how it might materialize, let's say, in getting, getting a more responsive supply chain, given your last example. Yeah, uh, uh, so, you know, supply chain is, is, is a great one because, you know, it, it's such an ancient way of doing things, right? I mean, you know, these supply chains have been around with EDI for um, forever and onboarding um, EDI suppliers is, is a massive task. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I mean, if I'm going to become your partner in an EDI kind of a scenario, while EDI is a standard for transmission of, uh, of, you know, an interaction between us, what the data that goes in the fields is something that we have to actually sit down and agree to. And so it, it's a very lengthy onboarding process. And when you get into one of these emergency kind of situations and I need a secondary toilet supplier, toilet paper supplier that, you know, is not the, the big guy that is sending me the, the, the you know, the, the truckloads of it, um, you know, on a monthly basis. I need to get somebody who's got it now and can get it to me tomorrow. Um, how do I onboard a partner quickly? Well, EDI is not going to solve that, right? The, so if I can identify uh, certain partner um, scenarios and, and supply chain is is one that we talk about all the time, um, you know, with the supplier or from a, from a CPG uh, industry perspective, the retailer retailers that sell your products. Um, you know, if I want to bring one of them on board, if I can pre-build APIs for what a supplier would need to um, access in my systems or what I'd need to tell them to place an order in their systems, 
um, I can onboard very quickly. And, and, and that then becomes a matter of, you know, establishing the business relationship very fast. Um, but the technology aspect of integration, which was historically very long, uh, EDI, or even if it was a SOAP web service kind of a thing, just the setting up of the interface and the security and all the things that go around that uh, could take weeks. Um, we can get that down to days. And, and so um, one of the topics I talked about at uh, some of the API Days conferences is uh, ecosystems and marketplaces. And, and ecosystems is, is this thought of building up these multiple partners that you want to onboard quickly. But the business aspect of that is the challenge after I get past the technical challenge um, of how do I onboard you quickly from a business trust perspective and agreement perspective. And that's where the marketplace idea comes in. The last session, um, just before this one, I alluded to marketplaces very quickly. I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but um, that's a big topic in itself. <laughs> yeah, because I, I can imagine, right, uh, well, I mean, the spaghetti integrations that exist in many systems, especially some of the payment service providers, um, and also the architectural side. So this sounds like a more holistic approach to to bringing, yeah. uh, bringing things together. And, 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 and is this different from what IBM was doing in the past? Has it sort of expedited the whole holistic architectural approach to enterprise architecture? You know, I, I think um, it builds on what we've done in the past, right? So, uh, I, I, you know, uh, this is my, I've been in IT a long time. You, you mentioned in my intro, I've been in IT for a very long time. Um, and nothing ever goes away in IT. We only add more, right? You know, so, so, uh, so um, you know, we have these monolithic systems that are running a lot of businesses. And some people are trying to break them up into, you know, agile, microservice kind of things, at least in part. But the monolithic things are going to be around for a while, right? And, and, and similarly, you know, the idea of, of um, back-end application integration that we've done for two or three decades now is going to continue to exist as well. But we've changed what we've done is because of the, the, the influence of APIs, I would say, over the last 15, 10, 15 years, whatever it's been, um, where it's become more agile, where the, the, the whole point of an API was speed, right? That, that I could do something that could be done very quickly and securely around the assets that I already have. Well, well that influence of speed has, has, has gotten back into the, the other things that we do. So we've actually redone application integration and, and messaging and all the other things that have been around for 20 or 30 years as microservices now. And so in, in our product in IBM, we've actually got a fully microservice enabled uh, set of integration tools. So if you wanna do an application integration between a, mic a microservice application that's on Amazon and a different one that's on Google and something that's on premise, you can deploy individual application integrations, not just APIs, to those different clouds from a central location. And so this is very exciting stuff. Because that's how we can do, you, you can't get to cloud in, in, in a performant way if, if you're not putting the integration near where it needs to be. If you have to constantly come back to a central location and this big monolithic ESB, that was the architectural style of the you know, 2000, early 2000s, um, it's just not going to work, right? So, so we needed to, to change that to an agile, we call it agile integration, but you know, it, it's a microservice-based uh, approach to integration as a whole. I'm not sure the intention is to talk about specific products, right? But uh, yeah, I, I try not to do that. I thought you would ask me, but <laughs> no, no, I'm actually interested because I, I, I worked at IBM before and uh, way back when integration yeah. was web, web sphere, right? So yeah, it, yeah. It, it was enterprise buses. It was messy. Yeah. What so has all that stuff what, has changed. Yeah. What, yeah. what, ha what has changed, if, if you would indulge? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's what I was just describing, right? So the, the, yeah. the, this idea of an enterprise service bus, which, which you know, we always said was an architectural style, but it was a product, you know? Mm. So, so you, would, you would, you know, implement an ESB product somewhere mm. in, in your enterprise, and, and then everything would come into the ESB and go out of the ESB to get to another application, right? So that was the way that we solve spaghetti problem that went before that right that uh, that you had all these point-to-point -point connections and, and you changed an application and it took you you know five years to to get everything right to you know to make everything work so the ESB was supposed to fix that problem by having everything come into the ESB and no applications 
directly connected anymore. But that created another monolith in the middle, right? We all of a sudden have this big ESB thing that had this to totally governed, centralized thing that, that everybody had to deal with. And the backlog on doing integrations in the ESB was, was, was you know, the same problem we had before. And if I ever had to upgrade the ESB, you know, oh my God, I mean, the whole world is changing, right? So, so how do I move forward in that kind of a world in an agile scenario? You can't do it. So what we did was we broke up the ESB into microservices. Oh, I see. So, okay. so, so you, you can have a, a centralized group that is going to do integrations if you choose to do that, but you can also have other groups that do integrations and deploy them as microservice integrations right next to the application that they're integrating to. So I don't have to come from Amazon to on-premise to go to Google, right? Um, you know, or IBM, uh, we have a cloud too. Um, you know, so wherever you want to go. So it seems that migration from legacy may not be as, as challenging as one might imagine if one's new to it. That uh, certainly, we've tried to make the integration piece easier, mm -hmm. right? So we, we can't do anything about how messed up your your, your monolithic application is. Uh, you know, if you if you've got a, a really tough to dissect application, um, you know that's a challenge, and then we're not going to fix that with an integration, you know, bolt on. But but if on the other hand you do something new that needs information from that monolithic application, yeah, we can help with that, right? So um, so so that's that's kind of you know what we've done is that as you start to microservice your architecture, uh, you know, ar around microservices, you're gonna have these big monolithic things hanging around sometimes too, you know, not, they're not all gonna go away, but you know, we can connect them. So I'm, I'm looking at the time and we've got like five minutes left. So okay. I, I, the platform is open. So just to, we're chatting away here, please inviting uh, the, the, the uh, attendees to, to share questions, if not uh, through, through voice, through the chat. Um, I think, uh, Alan, you, can you see the chat? I, I'm only seeing you what you write. I'm not seeing anything from anybody you, else. You so. don't have a chat window there. Okay. So I don't see any questions. I got a couple of highs at the beginning, and then I haven't seen okay. anything. Since. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure you will get some personal messages. That's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things I always like to offer is if anybody wants to, I mean, sometimes people are shy or they don't want to expose what they're doing to other people. Um, you know, we can always set up one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions, and uh, um, you know, we can we can do that. Um, yeah. So somebody's asking how to get in contact with me. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, all that stuff. Um, you know, we can have a first uh, interaction on LinkedIn and then share our emails. I think my email may be on the front page of my presentation. It's it's Glick G L I C K at us .ibm .com. Um You can just send me an email. Any of those are fine, and we can start. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll type in my my email, but um... yeah, good. Um, so I can imagine there are so many questions. We talked about the commercial sector. We haven't even touched on the public sector, and, yeah. and, and IBM is huge there. And the government is driving a lot of these COVID nineteen, um, uh, let's say, uh, act activities or actions. Um, yeah. I, would you have anything to, to add on on that on how IBM? Yeah, is yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. It was again one of the, the parts of the the series that I wrote was all about government. Um, you know, so much of what's going on is is how how we deal with the government from basic you know information we get from the government for the policies that that they are implementing today. Um, 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 contact tracing is a whole topic we we didn't even get into, but that's another one that I wrote about. Um, but, um, uh, you know, other things out around COVID-19, like, you know, people are unemployed uh, and, and looking for, for jobs. And so a whole, uh, whether it's getting unemployment uh, insurance payments from the government or whether it's looking for a job in, in a new, you know, role that you can work on, all these things are ways that government can use APIs to communicate with you. Uh, and for you to, to, to access their systems, uh, well, there's also, obviously, whenever you're dealing with money, there's the potential for fraud and, 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 and people doing what they, we don't want them to do. And so fraud recognition is another area where we want to do this. And, um, you know, voting is, is another one, right? So if we think about voting, um, you know, different parts of the world vote in different ways and, and the whole on, uh, 
in person on premise voting scenario is again something that that you know is is not really what people want to do and, and so what are the alternatives to that um, one of the other articles i spoke about was you know lines or queues you know waiting in line waiting in queues like you would do to vote or you know at the at the you know waiting for uh, you know a service to happen or something like that um how can we do away with that kind of queuing uh in line physically uh is, is something that we you know i think would everybody would appreciate um you know because you know nobody likes to wait in line anyway so if i could figure out some way to avoid that i i can i can become a rich person but uh you know i i, I think that there's some opportunity there well it's in the, in the government's interest to have happy citizens there is one question that's come in here and i know we're at the tail end but if you're okay yeah. i could carry on uh can you read the question yeah i can i can see that yeah so so the challenge and i actually brought this up when we were doing the whole microservice uh so it's a great question i like the question because i asked it myself um you know, um, you know, we don't want to go back to the spaghetti microservice, uh, the, the spaghetti uh, point to point uh, thing that we had in the past. Right. So the, the point is not to embed the integration into the application itself. I don't want to have the application know what uh, what or where the other thing is that it's going to. So if you think about the um, integration as a microservice, Let's 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 imagine it's a virtual um, location where that thing is, right? So the application is going to call this integration task to integrate to the other things that it needs to integrate to. That in the past was an ESB, so I would have gone to on-premise, gone to the ESB, and come out of the ESB and gone to where I I need to go. All I'm doing is virtually extracting the piece of that ESB that does that particular flow and putting it in a better location. So in, instead of the physical, having to come to that one physical location, think of the, the microservice application of an ESB as a, a, a distributed kind of an ESB. So, so I'm not embedding the integration directly into the app or the other app so that they know the syntax of the other app and all these other kind of things that, that you know, is historically the bad stuff that, that happened. I'm still managing and, and doing the integration as if it were an ESP, it's just a, a microservice deployed elsewhere. I hope that makes sense. Yes, well, I ho hopefully that's addressed the uh, the question. It's a it's a good question. Um, yeah. Um, so, thanks. Good. <laughs> yeah. So we, we can hang on a bit here. I encourage anyone any last minute questions could just ask them now. It's pretty informal. Um, or, or, or Alan's given his email. So, um, I, I mean, to me, yeah. it's, it, it sounds like the business can be more agile, and this is this is really enabling the business without layers of IT people and systems. Well, yeah. So that that to me is one of the biggest advantages of APIs. I, you know, I'm so excited in this API space, right? Uh, uh, you know, um, historically in IT, we've done things that make IT work better, uh, and. and you know, when, when you get into this API space, all of a sudden you're making the business work better. And, and I, I think if you do APIs right, you're, you're having that consumer orientation that I talked about in my, my presentation that, that allows consumers to use these IT assets in a much simpler and faster way than when they had to deal with the harder integrations that we've had before, right? And, and, and so we're not gonna get rid of that hard stuff. There's still hard stuff to be done but we don't need to expose it to the business. And the, the less we expose it to the business, the faster we can be in our business to achieve better results. And so for me, this is a very exciting thing. I've worked on a lot of different areas. I was SOA back in the SOA days. Oh. I was e-business back in the e-business days. I was WebSphere, you mentioned, I did all that stuff, right? So so I've been, been a lot of different jobs and, uh, and this, is, this is a really exciting one. Yes, it, it, everything moving faster. It sounds like you've been pretty agile in your education yeah. as well. Let's hope yeah, yeah. businesses and governments yeah. can also adapt. Yeah. All right. Well, looking at time, and uh, I'm not sure this is between lunch and whatever. So, um, for me, it's close to midnight. So. Oh no way. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, I know you've been 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 live for a while, right? So um, let let's call this a wrap. Unless there's any other last questions. But um, with that, thanks very much, Alan. There's so much to discuss here. And I, I think you, you explained it really uh, clearly. So thank you. Thank you.
Okay. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.